Hello and good morning everyone and thank you so much for joining us this morning. I hope you're all well. Um, I am joined today by a wonderful guest speaker, Lindsay Swills, who's the CEO for Social Bee. And I know a lot of you who've joined the sessions previously will really have appreciated um, her team's insight and knowledge. Um, we'll get started in a second, um, but just a little bit of housekeeping. And I'm sure, again, there'll be a few people on the line who are used to this. Um, we are leaving the chat open. So please say hello, let us know you're there. Um, and also, if you have any questions, please do put them through the questions tab. Um, we have an a packed session for you and Lindsay's got a little bit of time afterwards um, so please send them through the questions tab as you think of them and we'll work through them at the end um, and also uh, we'll be putting some polls in at the end just to get a little bit of feedback from you um, however if you could all um, we're in the process of planning a lot of these sessions for the future um, and part of that is understanding what times would actually be better for these sessions to take place for you all so I've just popped a little poll um, into the polls it's live now if you can all just take a minute or so and just let us know if this time still works for you that would be really helpful for us um, but with that in mind I'm gonna pass over to Lindsay to start the session lovely thank you Suzanne good morning everybody good afternoon subject to what part of the world you are in um, thank you for the lovely introduction it's great for us to be back um, giving you guys some hopeful great insight today so no, my name is Lindsay um, and I'm an international digital marketing strategist so I help businesses from the very very small to the very very large global well-known brands that you would recognize in how to be better online and in these uncertain times no more time than now is the key time to be thinking about how you can be better online there's lots of disruption in the market which is uh, you know relevant to everybody regardless of what um, country you're in and it's really important to think about how your digital marketing can help your business and you might think well nobody's buying right now so I shouldn't really concentrate on marketing and potentially that can be wrong for a number of industries whether it be the travel industry which we're not covering traditionally today but it, regardless of what the sector people are buying and people are searching so with the current insight we have, it's really important to think about how you can make your organization as strong as possible, whether you're a brand, whether you're a manufacturer, whether you are a retail outlet. And today, what I want to share and commit to sharing with you today is my great insight on things about considering if you sell wholesale at the moment, thinking about why you should consider the direct to consumer market. And there's one example that's probably blatantly obvious for this one It's slightly different, but Primark. Primark only had one route to market and their route to market was relying on the high street and they've been losing 650 million pounds worth of business a month. And in my eyes as a business owner myself, I would never risk having one route to market because it's just too dangerous for my organization. So it doesn't matter if you're Primark or a small organization, whether you're selling wholesale or direct to consumers at the moment, think about having more than one route to market. So I always love a cup of tea and a biscuit. So hopefully you guys have a cup of tea, chocolate biscuit, um, and let's start today's webinar. As Suzanne said, if you have any questions today, I've left about 15 minutes for the end of today's session to answer any questions today whatsoever. But that said, I don't bite. So please do feel free to email me or reach out on social media if you have any questions whatsoever. My commitment to the online industry right now is to help as many businesses as possible with any question, however silly it might be, to try and help them survive and thrive in what is a really difficult time. So the five tips I'm gonna share with you are hopefully gonna be very insightful. As always, this session is recorded, so if I gallop things, um, gallop along things a bit too quickly, you'll always be able to revert back, but hopefully this is filled of useful insight for you today. So there's one thing that is super duper important with online marketing, and this is things that people often forget. So it doesn't matter whether you're a B2B business or a B2C business, a small retailer or a large organization. This is a fundamental insight that people often forget. Online marketing and the internet, there's about 4.5 billion people on the internet. Um, it's huge. We are on there for a number of reasons, but this, this bit is absolutely critical. So even if you're not going direct to consumer from after listening to my webinar today, this is still absolutely critical regardless of what you're marketing online. The internet came about and as any other entrepreneurial organization, many organizations suddenly went, wow, we've got access to all of these people. Let's just jump on and start selling to them. 
So as an organization, people started to use the internet to sell their brand and have organizational needs to sell to people and have marketing objectives online. And that's fair enough. Absolutely, there's people online and they do want to buy regardless if it's B2B or B2C. So lots of people jumped online and continue to jump online today. So even if you don't have a website, people go, wow, I can jump online and I can start to sell. Absolutely, you can. But let's just put the consumer shoes on for a minute. So let's just put your shoes on and my shoes on as a consumer, as a human being, and why we use the internet. So Lindsay, myself, I'm a 40 year old, I have two dogs at home, a child, a husband, um, and lead a lovely quiet life in North Norfolk. Um, why am I on the internet? I'm on the internet generally to search for solutions to problems. So if my dishwasher is broken, where do I turn? I turn to the internet. If I need some eco-friendly nappies for my, for my son, where do I turn? I turn to the internet. Now the biggest problem here, and this is where the businesses really tend to mess up if I'm honest, and it doesn't matter how small you are as an organization or how big, and it's not to do with budgets, it's to do with understanding the customer. Too many organizations don't think about the customer's need online. They just jump onto the internet, jump onto social media and just start blatantly selling. And they're not aligned to what the person's needs are. They're not thinking about the problem that that person's trying to solve. They're just focused on, well, the person's gonna be aware of my product or my service, so they will just search for me and find me. And fundamentally, that is a total missed opportunity. So the real objective of any organization, however big or small you are, is about finding that sweet spot in the middle. Now, don't get me wrong, that is a very hard sweet spot to find. I've worked with some of the largest well-known organizations that you will have heard of on a daily basis. They don't get that sweet spot. The great thing about smaller organizations and the things I love about smaller organizations, whether you're a, you know, a small retailer in North Norfolk or a small retailer in Australia, you know, whether you're selling surfboards on the Gold Coast, you will be speaking to your customers directly. So you will know and you'll be able to listen to what their wants and their needs and their problems are, which is absolutely fantastic. So this is one super duper important thing to always think about regardless of what you're doing online. So this links me on to my first tip, actually listening to your customers or your target audience. If you're currently doing wholesale, you might not know what your customers' wants and needs are. And I'm gonna share with you today how to understand that. So if you've been selling to wholesale, if you've been selling wholesale so far, you may have been selling to end retailers, they will know what your customers' needs are, but they don't always translate that back to you. And the thing is, if you've been selling wholesale, you are absolutely wholly reliant on those retailers, whoever they may be, actually being proactive and listening to their audience and really adapting in the current market. Now, as a business owner myself, even though I work in digital marketing, it's been very hard. As a business owner, we've had a lot of things to juggle. We've had to juggle our cash flows, we've had to juggle our business plans, we've had to juggle members of our team, we've had to juggle uh, maybe renegotiating our rent. And sometimes our eye is off the ball when it comes to marketing. And a lot of organizations have just said, we're pulling our marketing. and I can see why they've done that, but actually it's a time to thrive online now and adapt because there's a lot of people sitting at home with money. If people have been furloughed, they are spending money on clothes. I've heard lots of people saying they're spending money on motorbikes, there's more golf club sales, people buying golf clubs, um, people buying clothing, earrings, stuff for their children, stuff kitting out their house, because if they've been furloughed, what are they doing? They're sitting at home, they're still being paid, they're twiddling their thumbs. So what do they do? They spend money on the internet. And even if it's B2B, so if they're B2B people that have been furloughed or have a bit more time on their hands, they are still researching on the internet. So it's hugely powerful to make sure that you listen to your audience if you are thinking about going direct to consumer. Because if you don't listen and think, actually, I can do this, I can just go online and start selling, you'll probably be missing a huge opportunity. And the thing is, when it comes to not just selling online, but selling as a whole, and, and you may not have done it before, generally people want to see about seven touch points before they're confident to purchase from you. Again, whether that is um, B2B or B2C, people don't generally go online and go, wow, I'm going to spend 
this money on this product or this service. Obviously, that will depend on the price point and what the product or the service is. But people, you know, people won't generally spend money in one go. They want to, you know, see reviews. They want to see what you're up to. They need to also be able to find you as well. So it's really important to think about listening to your audience. And the nice thing you have in the digital age is you have access to that. I started working in marketing in 2001 and the company I used to work for, first of all, it was really dull. I, you know, I used to say that when I worked there, it was a mortgage company, so it was dull as dishwater, but I only had the chance to advertise in the newspaper. The internet was coming around and it was becoming more popular and that's where I really cut my teeth, but internet wasn't really around, so I had to rely on data points, so insights from the newspaper saying, our profile of people that read this newspaper is, 100,000 people a day, they're generally 40 years old, et cetera, et cetera. Where now you have so many touch points to be able to listen to, you can listen to people on social media. You can listen to what people are talking about in forums. You can listen to see what people are saying about on review sites and things like that. And that is so powerful. But too many organizations don't use that data to listen. They just think, oh, I've got access to the internet. Let's go on there. And the nice thing that you have now as a regardless of whether you're a small organization or a big organization, you have exactly the same platforms to play on. It doesn't matter whether you're Nike or whether you're a startup trainer organization. You have absolutely the same playing field for everybody. It's about how you use that playing field, so how you use those tactics within your organization clearly it's not about how much money you can spend it's about how you use the tactics and understand your audience so that's my first core tip today my second core tip today is absolutely knowing your figures you have to know your figures online before you spend any money or time you can go online for free so you can set up a wix website today although i wouldn't recommend it you can set up some social media channels and not spend one penny but go out and market your business. So it doesn't cost you money, but it costs you time. But that's still a very dangerous thing to do. So figures, if I was setting up a business today, or whether I'm looking to grow direct to consumer today, the figures I would absolutely want to nail is what is my profit margin? What is my cost per um, inquiry or cost per website visitor? What is my cost per sale? And what is my conversion rate? And why are those figures important? Let me give you a couple of examples. First of all, you need to know what your profit margin is to understand how much potentially you can spend online to generate sales. I was speaking to a lady last week. I think she came on one of these sessions, actually, and I was just chatting to her on email. And she said, um, I haven't really had a strategy. This is a business that's come around by accident. I was selling wholesale, but people have started to come to me directly and I want to wrap it up. So I've just been um, spending a bit of money on Facebook ads and doing a bit of this and doing a bit of that. And there's no real plan around it. And I said, you're spending, she, I think she'd worked out she'd spent about a £1,000 on Facebook ads in the last month and there was no plan or rhyme or reason behind it. And I was like, goodness, that that is basically chucking paint at the wall to see what sticks. And that's not a sustainable business. And you're not going to grow your business that way. And I then asked her what her profit margins were. And her profit margin, she was like, oh, I hadn't thought about that. She calculated her profit margins. They were out 17%. So 17% is not a lot to be playing with. And if you think about your profit margins, if you're selling wholesale, Obviously, you're not going to be spending money on marketing. You're not going to have the potentially the distribution cost you would have if you used a distribution center, however large or small. And you're not going to have the postage costs and you're not going to have the customer service costs. So they're all things that you need to build in. Typically, from the clients that we've worked in, typically, you know, 30 percent seems to be about the going rate on um, profit margin. If you manufacture yourself, that is likely to be higher. Um, I do see it at about 80 or 90%, and some products are between 80 and 90%. So if you manufacture and sell direct to market, it tends to be a lot higher, obviously. But obviously, if you are manufacturing stuff in China, as an example, I know the shipping costs are now huge. So I think it was around potentially $4 per kilo to ship stuff over. And I've heard now it's between $17 and $27 per kilo. So your profit margins are being eaten into. But you absolutely need to know your figures if you're going to be doing anything online because you can quickly become a busy fool. So you're selling things online, but you're not making money. So you absolutely need to know need to know your figures. So my next tip is the better you know your figures and the better you know who your audience are, the cheaper they are to target. 
how amazing is that? That might not sound like rocket science, but it's amazing how many organizations don't know their figures and don't really focus on their customer. And just going back to the larger organizations, um, again, as an example, because I do work with a lot of larger organizations. It frustrates me greatly. I do a lot of training and work with them, but they don't tend to think about their audience as an actual person. They're always focusing them on um, a demographic. So female, 40 years old, has children, et cetera, et cetera. Think more than that. Think about the interests and that person's wants and needs and their interests. Because when you start to think like that, you can really get under the skin of that person and understand them better and target them better, which means it's actually a lot more cost effective for you to do so. So here's something to think about. People will often come to us and say, we want to increase our marketing. Uh, we want more traffic to our website because they automatically think, if I get more traffic to our website, I'm going to get more sales. Yes. However, think about things this way. Think about what you want to achieve. So think about your revenue of what you want to achieve online. And then think about this. If you can achieve your revenue online with the maximum, with the minimum amount of output to get your desired outcome, how amazing would that be? I don't know about you, but that would reduce your, it would reduce your, um, your marketing costs. You would get a higher conversion rate. You'd probably get a higher average basket value. It's just something to think about because people often think, well, I'll just ramp things up. If I do more, I'll get more. Well, absolutely you will, but actually your cost per inquiry will be a lot, a lot more. So just a reminder, if you have any questions, please do put them in the chat, um, the chat or the questions area, and Susanna and I will go through them. I am also supported by Evie today, who will be here as well. So she will direct you on links and things as well as we go through. But do drop any chats that you have, I'll, and I'll answer them later. And also, we've got a couple of freebies to give away at the end of today's session. So let's have a look at the channels, because there is a plethora of channels, and I can understand it can be quite overwhelming if you haven't done online marketing before, or perhaps you don't even have a website. So what I would like to do now is just chat through some of these in terms of what's going to be useful for you. So there are lots of channels out there. And again, because actually anyone can create these channels. So I could set up a Facebook account, you know, in two minutes, I could set up an Instagram account. Never mind, we're not going to talk about TikTok and Snapchat today. These channels need to be thought about wisely. But the first thing you absolutely need to get right before you start getting excited about of all the channels is your website. So the diagram in front of you now is a really good example of that. Your website is the hub of your wheel and everything else around it are actually signposts to your website. So you might have thought, I know what I'll do, I'll set up a website and we're gonna come on to what are the best ways to set up a website in a second. So you might have set up a, you might have set up a website and thought, I've got a website, there's four point billion, you know, four odd billion people on the internet, Lindsay said to me yesterday, why aren't they coming to my website? There might be four odd billion people on the internet, but if you just set up your website and just launch it, you need signposts for people to get there. Something else you need to bear in mind on your website is your website needs to be your best salesperson. A website should be the best salesperson that is selling for you 24 seven. And if it isn't doing that, if it doesn't have the key things in place already, then please don't start spending time, effort or money on social media or paid marketing or email marketing. Because basically what will happen is this is your website and you'll start posting on your social media channels. And what will happen is, wow, that's a really good social media post about this product or this service. They'll go to your website and go, wow, that's an awful experience and they'll leave. So you're basically wasting your time. So there's a number of things you can do with a website and it's really important to make sure that your website is set up in a correct manner and set up to be user friendly. Again, you'd be amazed at how many websites are not set up with the user in mind. So I've got some hints and tips to share with you today to help you with that. So a website should be built for your audience, not you. And I see this on a regular basis. I'll speak to people and they go, oh, I hate my website. I don't like the look of it. And I'm like, but are you the target audience? They'll go, well, no, I'm not the target audience. This type of person is a target audience. So when you are building a website, make sure it's built for your audience, not for you. In terms of what platforms to pick, um, whether it's e-commerce or whether it's just a website that is um, like a lead generation website, it's really important to pick the right platform to build your website on. 
There are two main platforms out there that I would, three that I would highly recommend. I would recommend Shopify, and I would also recommend WordPress with WooCommerce. Both of those systems are widely used across the globe. They are also very scalable. So it means if you are selling in the UK and you want to, you know, you want to internationalize, both of them are very good at that. They are also very relatively easy to use from a non-technical point of view. If you are a very technical, if you have a lot of SKUs, SKUs, if you have a lot of product filters, like thousands and thousands, then Magento might be an option for you. But two things I would highly not recommend, unless it is very specific, is first of all, having a bespoke website built. Do not touch it. The reason for not having a bespoke website system built is you'll be handcuffed to that website agency. And that puts you as an organization in a very dangerous position. Second of all is do not use systems like Wix or some of the other ones you see advertised on telly. And the main reason for that is if you're going to fall into the Wix camp, it's probably because you're building your website yourself. Now, let me just give you this as a thought. You are going to be an expert in your area. So if you make earrings or if you sell earrings or if you sell um, lighting, you're going to be an expert in your area. But with all due respect, you're not a website designer and you're not a marketeer unless that's your area of expertise as well. So just because you know about the product doesn't make you an expert in how to market your service online. So if you're going to invest in anything, I would invest in a Shopify website or a WordPress and WooCommerce website and get a designer to build it. When it comes to design of a website, it is absolutely key that your website is your best selling tool because you can be doing all these great things around the outside, but if you're not taking them to a great website experience, they're going to fall off very quickly. And it's amazing how many people go, oh, I've just built this website. It's your sales channel, so invest in it wisely. If you are investing in a web agency, make sure the web agency is um, not just great at designing a website, but understands user experience and also SEO as well. Don't go for one that's an expert in one or the other, because again, you're setting yourself up for fail. When it comes to design, put your customer's shoes on. The example I've got with you here is Tropic Skincare. Some of you may have heard of it. It's not a client of ours. The reason um, I'm sharing it with you today, because I've had a look at their website and I actually used it. So we're all stuck at home at the moment um, and I'd run out of some skincare and I'd heard about Tropic and I was like, I'm gonna give it a go. Like, why not? I'm into natural products. Um, I'm into all different, you know, I want to be more eco-friendly on the planet. But I obviously can't go into a store. I can't go to one of their parties at the moment. And if you go on their website, they know that people, if you haven't used them before, they're not going to know what skincare range you want. So it says, here's our five, our five core tips to picking the right skincare for you. So they take you through this amazing journey. And it's it's a Shopify website. Um, obviously, they're, they're a reasonable size, but they started small. So do have a look at it. In terms of your website, also make sure you have opportunities for people to sign up because people won't necessarily visit your website and buy today. Um, if I think about the journey that I go on when I'm looking at websites or yourself, it might be that you go, well, that's a good website, really like them. And I might need to come back and buy those eco nappies or buy those lightings tomorrow or in a couple of weeks time. But when that person's there, always think about getting them to say yes to something. So getting them to sign up to your email newsletter or getting them to follow your social channels. And also bear in mind international. If you are thinking about internationalizing things, please, please, please do not use Google Translate. Google Translate is not meant for online selling. It's just to help you and I to get past if we've got a sentence from something a sentence from someone that we want to translate and make sure that you're using the likes of Department of International Trade or an agency like ourselves or other international agencies that really understand e-commerce very wisely. So let's whistle stop tour around this circle of things and try and give you some other hints and tips. Social media. Very interesting platform. Lots of people jump on it on a regular basis. But here's some hints and tips of if you want to use social media and if you're thinking about going from direct to wholesaler, to direct to consumer. Make social media, e make it easy for people to follow you on social media. So first of all, use social media to listen. There's a huge amount of data you can use to listen to people on social media. People are too keen to go on social media and start posting content. I always say to people, you've got two ears and one mouth. So listen twice as much as you post. Because if you just post on social media, 
if you put your own customer shoes on again for a minute and think, why am I on social media? I'm guessing none of you will say to be sold to. You will probably say to find out about you know new products I wasn't aware of or to find out about the news, hang out with my friends, get inspiration, be educated on things. So think about that from your customer point of view. And I've got an example to show you in a second of how that was working wrong and how it can work right for a brand. In terms of the bio, so regardless of what channels you pick on social media, and I'll come on to that in a second, in the bio at the top, make sure you use keywords. Keywords are words that you sell. So as an example, if you're an eco nappy brand, you would use eco nappies or sustainable nappies in your bio, because if not, people can't find you. Also tell your followers in your bio what to expect. So what type of content are you going to share with them? And this helps you really think about what's going to be useful for them. So if you look at our social media accounts as Social B, if you look at our Twitter account and our Instagram account, it will tell you who we are, but also what type of content we're going to share. And it doesn't say anything on that about selling because we don't sell. We give you value. And if we give people value, they buy from us. Put your social media channels on your website. Now, this might sound like a really straightforward thing, but you'd be amazed at how many people don't put their social media buttons on their website. Now, here's an extra tip for you. Don't just put it on your home page because 80 percent of people, if you've built your website correctly, will not come in, will not find you based on your homepage. They will come in on a landing page. They'll probably likely to come in on a product page or a blog page. So on your header or your footer, make sure your social media channels, so your Facebook, your Instagram, your LinkedIn, regardless of what channels you pick, make sure they're on your header or on your footer of every page. On social media itself, in terms of content, think about your customers and why they buy from you and what value you can give them on social media. You can do that in terms of posting useful hints and tips. You can ask questions because absolutely on social media to work the algorithms on Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn, which my wonderful colleagues would have been sharing with you over the last weeks. And if you've missed that, do refer back to those webinars. Engagement is key on social media. If you're just posting content out for the sake of it, you are just chucking paint at the wall and you're just trying to be desperate at selling. So as an example, people think everyone's on Facebook, so I should be on Facebook. It's a bit like going into a, a room full of people and going, all these people want to buy from me. They don't. And if you went into a room and said, hey, I sell, you know, I sell widgets. What is the percentage of people that are going to want to buy from you? Probably a very small percentage where if you go into that room and start asking questions, listening, giving value, people go, oh, that's really interesting. Yeah, that's interesting. I do want to buy from that organization. Make sure you're posting at the right times on social media. Social media is not Monday to Friday, nine to five. People are on social media at all different times, especially if you're working in different countries or different channels. So use the insights that social media channels give you and also your Google Analytics if you use it to understand what time to post. Every channel is absolutely different. So the way that Facebook works is very different to Instagram, is very different to Twitter. So although you have tools like Hootsuite that allows you to post to more than one channel at any one time, please do not just tick the box that posts to all of them because they are all very different. In particular, Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn have a very clever algorithm. So if you are just ticking that box, I would suggest like either don't do it at all or think about spending the time to make it better. Um, I've already said about listening um, and posting and praying and do not hard sell. One final thing to be aware of, and this is really important, is social media is rented space. I hear of lots of organizations that are literally just selling on Instagram. But let me just share this thought with you. If Instagram disappeared tomorrow and took all of that audience away, how would you watch? How, how, would, you, um, how would you get your audience? You wouldn't. Now, lots of these channels, that's a very dangerous position to be in. So absolutely use social media. But think about um, getting people from social media onto your website, signed up to your email or signed up to something. Here's a quick example. This example here on the left hand side is for a Turkish food brand. Um, I've blanked out their names because I didn't want to sort of highlight them and go, this is really bad. But um, from speaking to them, they sell amazing organic products, things that um, really natural based products from Turkey. And they contacted me a couple of weeks ago and said, hey, we really want to generate more sales online. And I had a detailed conversation about them. And I said, why do people buy from you? And they said, our products are not cheap. They don't buy based on price. They buy based on 
the type of products we have, the fact they're organic and all the ingredients and all the natural insights into them. So I said, so on that basis, why are you pushing price on social media? Because if it's not price, why people are buying, why are you posting based on price? And they were like, oh, that's a really good in question. So the example on the left is the, the post that they were doing. The example on the right is an example that we mocked up and said, this is the type of content you should be posting. It's about educating, inspiring, and um, entertaining your target audience based on their wants and needs. If you just go based on price, you're gonna turn people off. Let's move on to SEO. Now, SEO is a really, really important part of online marketing. If you're just gonna set up a website and not do SEO, then you're probably missing 80% of your audience online. So SEO is basically short for the words that you type into Google, and they can be very short words like silver earrings, or they can be very long, long phrases like what are the best um, ideas, you know, what's the, I need some inspiration for um, silver earrings to wear with a black dress, as an example. So it's about identifying those keywords. And when you identify those keywords, you can use them, then use them on your website, on core pages, on your product pages, um, on blog posts. But do understand the intent. So understand of a keyword if they're just searching for some um, helpful hints and tips or if they're actually searching to buy. Um, if I was you, I'd create a list in an Excel sheet of the key terms and I would then build some content around that. And also think about blog content. So blog content, again, is a really under, underutilized resource. It's all about, if you think about if you have a problem with something, then it's the solution to the problem. Um, and if you think about um, people that aren't aware of your brand or aren't aware of your product or service, blogging is so, so powerful and it's so underutilized. And if we haven't covered it in a webinar for you guys at the moment, maybe we should do it because um, I think we've got a content one coming up in a couple of weeks time. But here's just an example um, way that you can find out about the keywords that people are doing. First of all, go to Google and just put your customer's shoes on and start to type what they might type in. And I've done an example here. I've just started to type in ethical clothing. And you can then see here in the predictive text what people are typing in. Now, Google hasn't put that in random order. It's put it in the order of people searching on. So if I was an ethical clothing brand for children, I can see the ethical branding for toddlers is a key term that people are typing in. So I would make sure that a core, is a core term. And I'd also think about the longer the longer term thing. So if someone's got a problem, now I'm gonna give you a whistle stop tour of an example that I had um, to help bring this to life for you. So I was lucky enough to become a mum about two, nearly three years ago now, um, which I'm hugely privileged for. Um, and being the type of person that I am, I didn't go to any antenatal classes. I did no research whatsoever on being a mum. I thought, well, I've got Google. I'll just, <laughs> I'll just turn to Google when I need to know something. And what happened was, is I, <laughs> excuse me, um, I went to Aldi, that's where I shop or was shopping, um, bought some Aldi nappies because um, they're cheap and they seem to do what I need them to. I bought some um, bags, I bought the wipes, I just bought all the kit. And within the first week of having Dylan, um, I was disgusted at the amount of waste that I was creating by this child. And I was like, oh my goodness, I mean, I'm not some eco warrior but I was totally disgusted by the amount of waste I was creating from Dylan, like, you know, the, the, the nappies and the bags and the wipes. I was like, this is not eco-friendly. So what did I do? I didn't know that there were eco-friendly options out there. So I turned to Google and I started to do some searching, like how to be a more eco-friendly parent. And this is where I started to land on blog content. So I then started to find out about how to be more eco-friendly. So I found out about reusable nappies, disposable eco-friendly nappies, um, eco-friendly wet wipes and stuff like that. But the thing is, I didn't know about the brands that were out there. So I didn't go eco-friendly nappies. I started off on a very sort of passive approach. So my intent was, I gave the intent there, but I didn't say I want to buy a nappy because I didn't know the solution to the problem. So just think about that in terms of the journey that you take people on, because it's hugely powerful as an organization, especially if you're starting out. Now let's move on to CRO. So CRO um, might sound like a very complicated area, but it isn't. So I just wanna break this down for you. So CRO is basically short for, for every visitor that you get to your website, trying to get them to say yes to something, getting them to sign up to something or getting them to pay for something. Um, 
And it's a critical thing to do. So if you're already marketing online and you're not seeing a great amount of sales, I wouldn't necessarily do more things on social media or SEO. I would get your CRO right first. And here's an example of that because people often think it's price and it's not price. Generally, people want to buy from you, but you're making it very difficult for them. Um, and here's an example of that. There was a bit of research carried out a number of years ago um, and it was a website that people were given as part of this research. It was a website and 10 people were given credit cards. So 10 people were given credit cards and said, right, visit this website and please purchase this item. So they were given the website. They were told what product to buy and they were given the money. So have a guess at how many people out of 10 managed to purchase the product. Drop your answers in the chat very quickly. Anything from zero to 10. And we'll have a quick have a quick guess at that. You are all pretty realistic. It was two. Only two out of 10 people managed to purchase the product because the journey was just so painful that they just couldn't, they either couldn't find the product or they couldn't um, sign in or it was just very complicated. So two out of 10 people, bearing in mind they were given a credit card. I'd love to be given a credit card and say, you know, go and spend a load of money. It was just too difficult. So the thing is, when you're on your website and if you if it's your product or your brand, you know where everything is. And you think, well, it's really easy. But you're on your website every single day. My suggestion to you would be two things. First of all, install some software to actually watch what people do on your website. There's some software called Hotjar. And actually just watch people. We always do this on websites. Just see where people get stuck. Second of all, ask someone who you know to, to do that exercise. I mean, don't give them the credit card, but say, have a look at our website and see how easy it is to purchase this thing. Or if you were struggling with something, how easy is, easy is it to find our contact details? Because you would be absolutely surprised at how, how many times people get stuck. And here's an example of this. This is one of our clients, Sarah Technologies. They sell lighting. We've been lucky enough to work with them for many, many years. And we've just really helped them to focus on what value do they add. And that red banner at the top, um, they didn't have it. And I said, why do people buy from you? And he's like, because we do same day delivery or we do next day delivery and none of our competitors do that. It's like five weeks. And I'm like, why are you not telling people? Why are you not telling people these things? Why are you hiding it on the contact us page or the checkout page? Like absolutely blow your trumpet on this sort of stuff. So think about the value that you add in the customer journey. Think about why people buy from you and why it's easier to buy from you than other people. Make it as easy as people as possible for people to purchase. And one caveat of what's going on at the moment is be really clear on your stock level. A lot of my team are purchasing a lot of stuff online, much like I am. And we're strugg really struggling as a consumer at the moment because we might go on a website and it says out of stock. And I'm like, well, if you told me when things are in stock, I might sign up for things. So if you are out of stock, why not put purchase now and as soon as it's in stock and the EK is this, then you can do it or put a banner across the top, Lisa Angel um, that does a lot of jewelry. I bought something from her last week and as soon as I went on the website, there was a banner across the top that said, we are delivering, but please bear in mind, we're just trying to put our team safety at top priority. So our delivery times are not next day, they are more likely to be a week. So they're just being very transparent with people. Let's finally move on to paid ads before you're on to email marketing. Um, paid ads, you've got Google Shopping, Badu. Google is not um, the search engine for every country. Just bear that in mind. So Google is very prominent, but so is Bing and so is Bado if you're in the likes of Russia. But if people aren't buying from you already, please don't go chucking more money at your social media ads to try and get more people to your website. Understand the journey that people are going on and Understand that before you start spending money. Really know your figures, because if you don't know your profit margins, you can quickly spend a whole lot of money with these paid ads because it's so easy to do so. Also think about, um, make sure that you're tracking things. So make sure you have Google Analytics in place. Google Analytics is basically what's going on under the bonnet of your website. And if you don't have that, basically what you're doing is walking around like this making decisions. And I don't know about you, but as a business, that's a very scary thing to do. And make sure all you do some testing. So just do a little test campaign and see if something works first because these ads can run away with you. Google makes out they are very helpful, which they are, 
but Google will ring you and say, you should be doing some Google ads. We'll set it up for you. They do set it up, but they do not look after it for you. So just a word of warning there. And let's finish on email marketing. Um, email marketing is such an underutilized resource. So if you're not email marketing at the moment, you are absolutely missing out. And as I touched on earlier, a lot of people will visit your website. They don't want to spend any money with you right now, whether it's because of budgets or they're not in that decision process to purchase from you today. But if they've liked what they've seen, encourage them to sign up to an email with you. An email should either educate, inspire or entertain. And when you do email marketing, make sure you focus on one call to action. And that can be a helpful call to action. And also build your email list focused on adding value to your customer. So don't think I'll email people today with an offer. You can do that occasionally, but people unsubscribe. People are much more likely to subscribe and open your emails if you give them value. And the best email system to use is MailChimp. So we've covered an awful lot this morning already. The core thing to focus on is attracting your right audience on the right channel at the right time, engaging them on things that are actually relevant and useful to them, and then thinking about converting them. And make sure you have a plan, because if you don't have a plan and you're just doing marketing, here's some questions to think, of, think about taking away. If your marketing isn't generating any revenue, any inquiries or no tangible benefit whatsoever, why are you doing it? You are wasting time and money and money is more precious than ever before. So with the goals that you have with your marketing, people often sort of put their online marketing in a different silo altogether. But I would very much align it within your organization. So what are your organizational goals in terms of revenue? So it might be that your overall, your overall organizational goals are to generate 10,000 pounds a month. So if that is what your goal is, then work it backwards and see how you can do that with online marketing. So don't forget knowing your figures, which I touched on earlier, and make sure you have a plan. So this is a very, um, I know it's very small, but here's an example of what a plan would look like. Your plan doesn't need to be a 40 page document, but it needs to follow the core tips that I've shared today and understanding who your target audience is, what channels they're on, what their challenges are, and even if it's not a challenge, like how to inspire them. And you might think I'm a clothing brand, they don't have challenges. Everyone has challenges in terms of, you know, we don't just go on to Google and think black dress or, you know, skinny jeans. We type into Google things like, you know, what's the latest trend in clothing or how to dress nicely as a new mum. We're typing in those things to Google and search engines all the time. And then also thinking about what channels to be on. So have that digital strategy in place and also have a calendar because what that means is if you are doing all of this yourself and you're juggling being a business owner and doing these other things as well, it just means your time is a lot smarter. And while we are in shutdown and you're probably putting lots of health and safety things in place to open your organization, which I'm praying for your sake that we're able to do very soon, you do need to think about actually how I can improve my online marketing as well. So just to wrap up before I take some questions and also share with you two free things we're gonna give away today, think about measurement. I've touched on how important it is today in terms of knowing your figures, but also make sure you have Google Analytics installed on your website, because if you're not measuring where you are at the moment, how are you gonna know if you've improved things? How are you gonna to know to reduce your cost per sale or improve your conversion rate? You're not gonna know that. So make sure that Google Analytics is installed. In terms of reporting, something else just to finish on is do report, whether it's reporting to yourself or whether you're working with an agency or whether you have somebody working within your organization. I won't chat through this in detail um, because we don't have time today, but do have a look at this high level reporting because based on your objective, based on your revenue, it's not about how many tweets you send or how much SEO you do. It's about the outcomes. And if you remember the point I shared earlier, think about the desired outcome you want to achieve with a minimum amount of input. And the minimum amount of input comes from understanding your audience, understanding your figures, and operating on the right channels at the right time. And it might mean that you need to spend a bit of money on online marketing, but only spend it when you understand all of those figures. Because what you can then do is create a report like this and know instantly, yep, things are working or things are not working. So we've covered an awful lot today, but just and I've covered a bonus of measurement as an extra one. But the core takeaways today are understand your online marketing and not from your point of view, but from your customer. So wearing those customer shoes, 
Second of all, absolutely know your figures. And if anybody wants any insight on understanding your figures, um, do please drop us an email and maybe we can do a webinar on it if people want to know. If you do want to know more about understanding your conversion rate or um, understanding a cost per sale or how much to spend on marketing, because that might be a question you're probably thinking of, OK, Lindsay, I currently do wholesale. but If I wanted to go to online marketing and go direct to consumer, how do I know how much to spend? I know a lot of people ask me that question. And if that is a question you don't know the answer to, then perhaps drop a why in the chat now. And maybe Suzanne and I can um, do another webinar for you on that, because that's a whole session in itself. Understand your audience. Build your website based on for your audience, not for you. Use the right channels at the right time and also measure what you are doing. Because if you don't measure what you're doing, again, you're walking around blindfolded, which is a very, very dangerous position to be in as a business owner or as a marketeer. So as always, we do value your feedback. Um, I know that Susanna has some feedback as well. So if you don't have a chance to fill in our feedback form, then not a problem. Um, but hopefully um, you do have time alongside that. If you have any questions, um, I will take them in a moment. But before we go on to questions, what I would like to do is offer two people 30 minutes free consultancy. Now, we were doing this on a first come, first serve basis, but now we're not. So there's no need to rush. All you need to do, Evie will drop this link in the chat in a second if you don't have time to write it down. But if you go to this link on our website and just fill it out, we will then give you until the end of today to fill it out and we will then pick two people at random to get free consultancy, two free sessions from consultancy. So hopefully it's useful and you can ask us anything, hopefully through the sessions you've been um, attending the last few weeks with us. We know a lot about digital marketing across a number of sectors. So whether you're um, a farm shop, whether you're lighting, whether you're B2B, whether you're in the UK, whether you're in Australia, we know an awful lot of information. So while I'm taking questions, I'm going to leave these three resources for you. But I'm more than happy to take questions, Susanna, now, if anybody has any questions. We definitely have a few. Um, and just to answer a few that have popped up, we will be sending through the recording for you. So if you want to recap or rewatch, um, you'll have that option or, or to share. So look out for the email this afternoon. Um, right. We have had quite a few questions come through actually I'm going to start with Kevin um, he asked a question really early on in the chat that I hope is a really quick answer for you um, but quite early on you talked through profit margins of online sales and the importance of knowing your numbers so that you're able to make money you mentioned it's about 30% profit margin for D to C would you say that's that's about right for online sales um, it's a decent amount enough to actually make it worth your while doing um, and from our point of view, it's generally the average that we've seen. And 30 percent is good. You know, I wouldn't probably want to do any more than 20 percent because once you've taken off everything, there's, you know, there's slim profit margins. So things to bear in mind is if you are competing against the big boys. So as an example, we were working with a light bulb company many years ago and they were com we were competing against the likes of B&Q. So they had very slim profit margins and they were competing against the likes of B&Q on, on Google Shopping. And however which way you cut it, you were never going to make a decent amount of profit. So it was almost like just stick to wholesale because that's the best place to do it. So I'd say an absolute minimum of 20 percent. Um, 30 percent is about the going rate of what we see and is, is a nice chunky amount. And everything above that is an absolute bonus. OK, um, and a question here on email marketing. And I think this is one that everybody will probably appreciate. Um, we get absolutely bombarded with emails. Do you have any tips or tricks or things that people can do to make their emails stand out? Very good question. Um, I'm exactly the same boat as you. I get emails. I get hundreds of emails and they're all like 20 percent off, 30 percent off. And I'm like, how do you know I want money off? As I touched on earlier with that website example, it's not about money for a lot of people. It's about educating, inspiring and entertaining. So if you really wear your customer's shoes, you will know how they're feeling right now and think about based on what people are sharing on social media, create content that's relevant to them. So as an example, Neil's Yard is a very good example. Um, it's a skincare brand and I'm not, I'm not, don't get me wrong, I've talked about Tropic today and Neil's Yard. I'm not some female geek that buys lots of skincare. In fact, totally the opposite. So Neil's Yard are very good at their email marketing and understanding their customers. So they will send, they've been sending emails right now with not money off, but when we went into lockdown, they knew, like probably you and I, both Susanna, we're washing our hands an awful lot more. So what did we end up with? Cracked hands, very sore hands. 
So what did they email out? They emailed out hints and tips of how to reduce cracked hands. So it was providing value and they would have got sales from that. So it's understanding the wants and needs of the person in terms of your customer and what's going on in the market at any one point. So think of value, not sales. Please don't send 20% off emails twice a day because your email list will quickly disappear. <laughs> Great. Um, I think this could be the million dollar question here, but how do I drive consumers to buy on my website rather than through Amazon? Oh, very good question. Million dollar question. Million dollar question um, and a very good question. I've been lucky enough to work with some of the largest brands in the world on Amazon. Um, and Amazon is a place where people go, but actually Amazon also realize there's some stats I don't know off them off the top of my head, so please forgive me. But Amazon doesn't just drive sales to Amazon. People will look on Amazon and they will also look on the internet as well. Amazon has that one click button, which is a convenience thing. So it's not about price, it's about a convenience thing. But actually going into lockdown, um, Amazon wasn't able to deliver. So people were actually going elsewhere. The thing about Amazon is it does have, it's hugely customer centric. They spend a huge amount of money on customer centricity. So look at them from that point of view. If you are gonna sell on Amazon, then do so. But if you are selling on Amazon and direct on your website, if you're gonna make it cheaper anywhere, make it cheaper on your website because people will often look on Amazon and then go and have a look at your website and go, oh, it's cheaper over here. But in terms of competing against Amazon, not everybody buys on Amazon. So really think about the customer centricity and think about the customer experience that you can give because you're not gonna compete against Amazon. Amazon is slowly but surely taking over the world apart from some countries like Romania and Belgium, I know they don't work in because there isn't enough of an audience there. But really think about how you can be different and how you can give that experience that they're not likely to get anywhere else. And the other thing with Amazon is, they only have set fields that you can operate in. So you can add video content, you can add photo content, you can SEO your content and do reviews. But um, think about what else you can do to add that value. We could add a whole other session in terms of competing against Amazon, but that's it in a very, very small nutshell. Yeah, I think that competing against Amazon session could be quite popular if we do that. Um, well, that's <laughs> I have to to this one, haven't we? Yeah. So I think... Um, I have a, a question here and I think this is one again that maybe some of these goodies can help with but um somebody says I love your plan I love planning formats is there a place to get good planning performers any good practice examples you can help with sorry Susanna can you just ask that question again yeah sure so we had a question saying I love your planning formats is there a place to get good business planning performers and any good practice examples that you can help with um we i'm not i'm not here to sell today but there is we do have a digital strategy that we sell on our website um so you can actually get a template of that um but failing that just go through my slides today if you can't afford our template um just google and there are some free ones that come up obviously they're free so you do tend to get what you pay for or ours has been created over like 10 11 years in business um, but just go through my, back through my slides and create almost like a field for everything I've gone through. That would be a, a more time intensive way, but um, another session, another way of doing it. OK, great. Um, two questions around websites. Um, so you mentioned earlier that you'd always recommend using a web designer. Um, we have a question from Haley saying, would you recommend using a web designer to help with your Shopify website? Um, and if so, do you have any agency recommendations? Um, Again, I'm not here to sell, so I don't yeah. want to say come and use us, but we are a digital agency, so we do build websites. Um, but I would use an agency for a number of reasons on Shopify. Um, Shopify is very easy to use, which is why I recommend it. But in terms of the user experience and the SEO, Shopify isn't great at that, so it does need some technical input. So even if it's not redesigning your website, if you want it to be better, then do reach out to an agency. Um, but there isn't any one particular I can recommend. If you were going to Google and having a look, I would always ask the agency to see some actual examples of some of the other websites that they've helped build or improve to give you that and also speak to some of their other customers. That would be give you peace of mind that, that they've got happy customers, which is what you want to see at the end of the day. No, absolutely. And then the second question from Margella, she says they have a new website with WordPress, but the web designer is saying she's going to launch it first and then add Google Analytics later. Is that the right way around? No. 
Well, I don't, you want to you want to make sure you're measuring from absolutely day one. So you want to install the code before your website's launched, and then as soon as your website is launched, test it. So get everything lined up. So get your Google Analytics um, installed in the background and make sure you're tracking everything from your email signups to your contact form signups to your sales. And then as soon as your website is live, test everything and tr check that it's tracking correctly. OK, great. And you I had a feeling that was a question that you'd be happy to answer. Um, right. Question from Anne. Um, she says we rely entirely on the tourist market who are not coming into the country right now. Any suggestions on how to reach them on social media? So I think that's going back to a little few points around engagement. Yeah. Um, first of all, I feel for you because obviously tourism is huge in the UK. And if you're in places like, you know, I live in Norfolk and there's a lot of tourism here and Wales and other places. So the great thing about social media and in particular tourism is people aren't coming right now, but they are looking. So as an example, people um, and when I've done this talk for a wider community or the travel sector, people think, people aren't booking holidays right now because they can't go. Absolutely, they can't. But they are sitting at home thinking, I'm desperate for a holiday. Where can I go and looking for inspiration? So the number of searches online, as an example, from UK to Spain, January 2021 is up over 1600 percent. So what I would be doing is doing blog content um, around. Um, I don't know where you are in the country or what you do, so please forgive me. But um, educating them and inspiring them on why to come and also people are searching around you know is it safe to go to Spain or you know when is coronavirus limitations going to be lifted in this country that's all prime blog content but in terms of reaching out to them um, I would be posting content around that on social media saying you know don't come now but these are the things that you know here's some live things so I'm, I'm a big traveler I love traveling and I was was lucky enough to pretty much travel overseas every other week with my work so I was able to travel and do work, which is a bonus. And the thing I'm missing most at the moment is travel. So what am I doing as someone that loves to travel? I'm listening to travel podcasts and I'm also watching live streams of places I can't go to at the moment. So I love scuba diving. So I'm watching live streams of things to do with diving in Thailand and Australia. So think about how you can inspire people to think about when they are ready to come, that you're showing them content now. And you can also reach out to people. So use social media to search so go on to instagram and search so if you are like an eco i don't know eco lodge in wales as an example do some searches of if people that typically come to you are from italy then do some searches based on italy based searches and maybe people that are interested in eco or sustainability and see who you can find and engage with them that way rather than waiting for them to come to you so hopefully there's a few hints and tips in there that's great. Thank you. Um, next question is from Colm and he says, um, if you want to concentrate on a region to sell online, how can you focus your online marketing specifically to that region? Do you have any top tips? Um, I don't know, Colm, whether you're referring to a region in the UK or a region in the world. I would say um, a region in the UK. OK, so if, Although, it, Colm, if you want to um, just chat, put into the chat, then we can just answer that as we go. But I'm assuming a region in the UK. In terms of if it's a region in the UK, then if you are doing paid advertising, the great thing about that, whether it's Google ads, Bing ads, or social media posts, you can target that down to a region. You can even target it down to a city. So the great thing about advertising is you can target that down. In terms of social media, um, like organic type stuff, again, you can regionalize it down by using um, the local hashtags. So if you want to target businesses in Norwich, as an example, use the hashtags and listen to the hashtags and engage on the hashtags in the region. If it is international, then again, on social media advertising and Google advertising, you can internationalize it. So if you were a company based in the UK and you only wanted to target people in Australia, I'm into Australia because my favorite country, then you can do targeting around that on Google ads, Bing ads and social media posts. And again, if you wanted to engage with people organically, then think about it from their point of view. I wouldn't probably put hashtag UK in one of my Instagram posts. I'd probably likely to do Norfolk or Norwich. So if you're looking for people to have a conversation with, don't look countrywide on social media, look sort of city or state or region wide. Okay, great. And I think we've got one last question. Um, and I promise Lindsay isn't here to plug Social B, but they've asked specifically. So Richard said he's joined because they're creating a, sh um, a small museum shop and they don't want to sell products online. Does Social B help organisations like us build engagement and visitors? 
Yes. So we don't just do um, sales online. We do lead generation and stuff. And I've noticed through the chat, some people are struggling to fill out the consultancy form because it doesn't have today's session. Apologies. Um, we've had a very busy week doing lots of free webinars like this. So if you just pick the previous one, the previous um, Hive one, which I think was the 3rd of June, then if you complete that. Um, but yeah, if anyone has any questions or queries after date, do please drop us a tweet or an Instagram or email us at marketing at socialb.co.uk. Like I said, I don't bite, so I'm more than happy to answer any questions. But if I get an influx of them, please don't expect me to answer today. It might take me a week or two to come back to you. Okay, that's great. Lindsay, thank you so much for your time. I hope everyone found it useful. There was so much information in there. Um, just to recap, we will send, you will have access to the slides here and you'll also have access to the sessions. Um, just as a heads up on session next week is actually around metrics. So I know Lindsay asked and a lot of people started putting yes, they'd like that session. Um, so when you get the email that we send just after this session finishes, it'll have a link to all of the series, including the content creation session that Lindsay's running at the first week in July and that will really run through I think some of the blog content as well so keep an eye out for the email um, and any feedback that you have please let us know okay thank you very much everyone thank you see you later